not bring forth a clean person because Adam and Eve from the very beginning sinned against God. Now everything I went down to everyone and it says behold I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Verse 6 says it says behold thou desirest truth in the inward parts. He wants the truth. He wants the sincerity. He wants the righteousness. He wants the transparency. He wants the love of God. He wants the redemption. He wants the salvation. He wants the cleanness, cleanliness. He wants the holiness. He wants everything from the inward path. That's why when he saves us, that's why when he redeems us, that's why when he turns our lives around, he does it from the inside. Because on the Indian world past, he doesn't want only the external righteousness, only the external change. He wants an inward change, an inward transformation, an inward redemption, an inward forgiveness as well as forgiveness. He says, thou, the almighty God, the holy one, the perfect one, thou, God in heaven desires the, in the inward past and in the hidden past thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 he said purge me. He says I'm ready. Purge me. Forgive me. Cleanse me and take everything that is evil away from me. Blot out every transgression and make me clean and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, make me to hear joy and gladness that, that, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Then in verse 9, in verse 9 it says, hide thy face from my sins. Blot out all, not some. Blot out, not only the, you know, this one, I don't like that one, I don't like that one. They are even dangerous in my life, blot that one away. But this one is sweet. There are people that hold on to their sin because they say this one is sweet. Wait, it will soon be bitter. It's sweet in your mouth. It's sweet at the time you're committing the sin. But... Even in life on earth here, it will be bitter eventually. And then if you don't repent and you die in that sweet sin, it will be bitter punishment in hellfire forever and ever. Hide thy face from my sins and blot out all my transgression, my iniquities. Verse 10, in verse 10 it says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. A clean heart, O God. You see, sin had defiled our hearts, made our hearts dirty. Sin had made it dark and dirty and defiled. But now the psalmist is praying. He wants the grace of God. The mercy of God, the blood that blots away every sin and every transgression. He wants that blood to be applied. And when that blood is applied in your heart, like it will do tonight for everyone. I said it will do tonight for everyone. It will clean you up, creating me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Verse 11 in verse 11 he said cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. In verse 12 and he says in verse 12 restore unto me. Give unto me. Grant unto me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. The joy of thy salvation. When you are saved, the Spirit of God will be a witness in your heart. Your sins are forgiven. Your life is turned around. Righteousness has replaced sinfulness in your life. And the joy of heaven and the joy of salvation will 
will be in your heart not partial joy not intermittent joy you're happy now and then next time next step you're unhappy you're sorrowful up and down on the mountain in the valley it's not an easy road and then you are sorrowful every time in the day you smile when you are with other people you smile but in uh, when you are alone by yourself and you see the consequence of what you're doing and everything you're regretting uh, and you're saying why am i like this when we get saved he grants us the joy the joy of salvation it says restore unto me the joy of salvation full salvation full joy continual salvation continual joy and upright salvation that sets you up and upright joy he puts us on he puts you on the high level and he says uphold me with thy free spirit that is what he does he will do it in your life accomplish it in your life look at Luke chapter 1 we're looking at verse 72 in Luke chapter 1 verse 72 to perform the mercy you see that salvation is by mercy redemption is by mercy righteousness is by mercy healing is by mercy deliverance is by mercy perform to perform the mercy promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant and then in verse 73 it says the oath which he swear to our father Abraham verse 74 that he would grant unto us that we been delivered out of the hand of our enemies delivered out of the hands of our enemies delivered out of the hands of our enemies Praise the Lord. There are enemies without. There are enemies within. There are enemies external. There are enemies internal. There are enemies public outside there. You are moving on and you are getting on. And the people that do not like the progress you are making, the success you are having, the joy you have, and the victory you have, and the success you have outside, outside there. If they go against you, the Lord says it will deliver you from all the enemies. But there is an internal enemy. There is a personal enemy. And that enemy within is greater than the enemy without. The one who says this life of righteousness and this life of holiness, I'm tired, I'm giving up. And the voice is speaking within that enemy within that says backslide that says go take your bottle of alcohol again that says go take up your secret marijuana again that enemy inside you he wants to ruin you the one speaking from within and it says are you not tired bible bible every time holiness holiness every time and you, other people are enjoying their lives and you are here and saying holy holy righteous righteous power power jesus jesus heaven heaven other people are enjoying and that thing tells you from inside you to turn your back on the Christ that saved you to turn your back on the life of righteousness and holiness that's the enemy within that enemy inside you is greater it's higher it's more powerful it's more destructive than enemies without but that enemy within God will silence that enemy you will not backslide you will not go back from the Lord. The enemy from without and the enemy from within. The inside push into evil. The inside push into the old lifestyle. It's an enemy. But then he says that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemies might serve him without fear. Amen. Amen. You, let me ask you a question. If you were not afraid that somebody will say something, 
Somebody will do something. Somebody will act somehow. Somebody will criticize you. Somebody will belittle you. Somebody will make fun of you. If you were not afraid, if there was no fear in your heart, what height will you reach? That's why the Lord wants you to reach the highest height, the highest peak. And he wants you to understand that on earth, in the sea, anywhere there is nothing to fear and then he delivers you it says now i set you free free from fear and you move on and you do what the lord has created you to do you will reach the highest peak in jesus name look at verse 75 in holiness and righteousness before him in holiness and righteousness when there is no fear no fear within no fear without no fear around when there's no fear no fear of a persecutor no fear of somebody that will double cross your way no fear of anything and you only have the faith in god and the power of god that works in you and the mercy and the love and the grace when there's no fear and you know heaven is smiling on you and all the people that frown the Lord will kind of silence them. You will live in holiness. I will live in holiness. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. All the days of our life. All the days of our life. How long are you going to live in holiness? How long are you to live in righteousness? Look at uh, number two now. Point number two is the recovery from frightful sicknesses through the gracious, unceasing mercies of God. It's all by mercy that we're healed. It's all by mercy that we're recovered. It's all by mercy that we're set free from every yoke. Every yoke in your life broken tonight in Jesus' name. Every sickness, every disease, every infirmity, every demonic oppression and possession. Tonight, every night, it'll break every yoke in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 103. Psalm 103, we're looking at recovery from frightful sicknesses through gracious, unceasing mercies. It says in Psalm 103, verse 1, Blessed be the Lord, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, bless his honored name, bless his exalted name, bless his mighty and powerful name. Look at verse 2. In verse 2 it says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What are the benefits? Look at verse 3. It says, Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. All thine iniquities. All, all, all. He'll forgive everything. And then who healeth all thy diseases. He heals all diseases. Cancer will be healed. Tuberculosis will be healed. HIV AIDS will be healed. Uh, near will be healed. Tumor, fibroid will be taken away. Blind eyes will be healed. And deaf ears and dumb tongues will be healed even tonight here and everywhere we're connected in Jesus' name. As he forgives all sins, iniquities, he also heals all diseases and all sicknesses. Look at verse 4 there. In verse 4, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. You see, it's all by the mercy of God. Forgiveness by mercy, not marriage. Healing by mercy, 
not marriage. Deliverance by mercy, not marriage. New life in your body, new life in your soul, new life everywhere, in every place, it says, by the tender mercies of the Lord. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, it says that Lord is merciful and gracious. That's why he forgives. That's why he saves. That's why he heals. That's why he delivers. It says that Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger. Slow to anger. It says, God is slow to anger. There are, you know, people say, well, children of God, children of God, I'm saved, I'm even sanctified, and they're quick to anger. They're in a hurry to get angry. And if, you know, from the morning till the afternoon until the early evening, there is nothing they have been angry about. They say, what's happening today? I'm looking for something. I'm looking for somebody. I want to get angry. You know, when we become children of God, it turns our lives around. He wants us to be like God. And he says, it's slow to anger. And when we're children of God, you're not looking for chance to be angry, events to be angry at, a person to be angry at, and you're not crying an angry face, all about a frowning face, all about, don't you have the joy of salvation? Don't you have the release that comes with salvation? Don't you have the happiness that comes with salvation? God is slow to anger, and his children are slow to anger. They are not looking for things and for people to be angry at, it says it's plenteous in mercy. It's plenteous in mercy. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, it tells us, for as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy. Look at that. That's the mercy that forgives. He'll forgive you tonight. That's the mercy that sets free. He'll set you free tonight. That's the mercy that heals and delivers. Your day has come. Your time has come. And that mercy is forever and is high. It's great. And that mercy will not fail. And then it says, he has that mercy, great mercy towards them that fear him. Look at verse 17. In verse 17, it says, but the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. The mercy of the Lord. He had mercy back in Exodus, back in Genesis, and then in the Psalms, until the end of the Old Testament, and Christ came, the mercy carrier, and the mercy giver, that he forgave the worst of sinners, he healed the worst of sicknesses, and he didn't ask for any pain, he didn't ask for anything, it's all by mercy, and not by marriage, and that mercy continues, because it's from everlasting to everlasting that mercy will come to you today it says it says the mercy of the lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him and his righteousness unto children's children he'll save you he'll save your children it'll save their children and from generation to generation until christ comes the mercy for salvation will continue in jesus name look at uh, 145 psalm 145 uh, i'm reading from verse 8 in psalm 145 uh, reading from verse 8 the lord is gracious and is full of compassion and is slow to anger and of great mercy look at it everywhere we go in the psalms everywhere we go in the word of god everywhere we go in the bible he reminds us that God is of great mercy. Look at verse 9. In verse 9 it says, the Lord is good to all. The Lord is good to all. Let me shout it out. The Lord is good to all. Say it aloud. Tell your neighbor. All, all, all the sinners, the backsliders, 
the disobedient people, the rebellious people, and the people who are drinking sin like water, and they are eating sin like food. The people who took pleasure in sin, he loves everyone. He doesn't want you to perish in sin. He wants to save you because he is good. That's as savior, he is good. As healer, he is good. As deliverer, he is good. And it says, the Lord is good to all. It's good for them in the east. It's good for them in the west. It's good for them in the north. It's good to them in the south. It's good to them in our country. It's good to them all over the world he is good to all in every nation the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies look at that again everywhere is reminding us you go this way it says remember he has tender mercies then you go that way it says remember his tender mercies and the mercy is here today here in Eula the Lord has tender mercy here at the Alpha location, the Lord has tender mercies. He, there, anywhere you are, you're listening over the radio, you're listening over the television, the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works. Look at verse 10. In verse 10 it says, All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord. All thy creatures, the people that God himself has made, the people that God himself has created, all thy works, all thy creatures shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. In verse 11 it tells us, They shall speak of thy glory, the glory of thy kingdom, and talk of thy power. In verse 12, it says in verse 12, to make known to the sons, to the children of men, his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Then in verse 13, it says, thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, eternal kingdom, unending kingdom, enduring kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations in verse 14 verse 14 says the Lord upholds all that fall if you had fallen you were saved before but now you went back to the gutter you went back to your dregs you went back to your alcohol you went back to your substance you went back to the hard drugs and you went back to the fornication to the adultery you went back to the promiscuous life you went back to the defiled life he restores he restores as you come to the Lord today and you say Lord I went away I've gone far away but I'm coming back home the mercy of the Lord will meet you in Jesus name the Lord upholdeth all that fall and raises up all those that be bowed down he raised you up today it will turn everything around in your life today. Look at James chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 11. James chapter 5. We're looking at verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. And ye have heard of the patience of Job, of the problem of Job, of the perseverance of Job. You have heard what happened to Job, all the things that came upon him. Look at this now. And you have seen the end you have seen the final thing that the Lord did of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. You see that? Whether it's for Job, or for Jacob, or for Jeremiah, or for anyone suffering, he'll pity you. He'll have compassion on you. And it will show his tender mercy upon your life in Jesus' name. That's why it says in verse 15, look at verse 15, it says, And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Tonight, the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Over there will heal you. Over there will deliver you. 
over there he'll set you free online everywhere just focus your heart on God I'm a sinner he knows I'm bad he knows I've gone wayward he knows I brought this upon myself. He knows. Yet you understand. It's not because you've never done bad things. It's because he's always good. It's because his mercy endures forever. It's because the pity of the Lord, the compassion of the Lord, the mercy of the Lord will see reach you there. And then he'll turn your life around tonight in Jesus. He says the prayer of faith shall save the seed and the Lord shall raise him up and if he has committed sins they shall be forgiven him why don't you shout amen yeah. if they have committed sin you see I'm a sinner your conscience condemns you the Lord will forgive Satan, the accuser of the brethren, you say, uh -huh, crusade, crusade, and you are there. And the preacher said, God will forgive, and you think you are going to have forgiveness? No, I don't think. I know. I know. I don't think Satan says, do you think you'll be forgiven? Uh -uh, I'm not thinking. I know. I know that. I know that. I know that tonight you'll be forgiven in Jesus' name. If he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Look at verse 16. It says, confess your faults one to another. What's that saying? First of all, you confess to God. If you come to man and you confess and you hide it from God, man is not the final authority to give you forgiveness. God is the final authority to give you forgiveness. And what you do is you confess your iniquity, you confess your sin, you confess your transgression, those hidden things that you have done. God knows them already because light shines before him on everyone on earth. You confess unto God, God in heaven, you know from here to there we draw the vertical line, but from here to there to your neighbor, to your wife, to your husband, to your colleagues, to your friends, to the people around you that you, com that you committed sin against horizontally from here to there. You confess your faults to the people you have offended. If you've sto stolen something in, from him, you give back to him. If you have taken a woman from a family, you didn't even have the parents' consent, you just wixed her, and then you are gone. You confess, your, the parents have been sorrowful. Look at this lady that were trained. Look at this her daughter that were trained. And this boy, and this young man that never spent anything. The lady made herself so cheap. And then she's gone with a man we don't even know. You confess your sins one to another horizontally here and then vertically like that. That makes the cross. And it is when you confess your fault to God, vertical. And you confess your faults to man, the man you have offended. You are not, you know, putting your head like the ostrich in the sand. You feel guilty when you see that man. I stole from that man. And then you turn your eyes away. You know why you have that guilt, that condemnation? Even though you say you are saved, it is because you have not confessed your sin one to another. And when you have the grace of God, that you confess to God and you're not going back to them again and you confess to man and you are not going to that man or any other man to steal from them again it says confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed and the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much the prayer will avail on your life Salvation, salvation, yeah. healing, yeah. 
deliverance the Lord will accomplish in your life in Jesus name let's look at number three here number three righteousness of faithful saints through guarded unadulterated mercies the righteousness you see before we came to the Lord we were unrighteous now if we say we have come to the Lord and we remain on righteousness that cannot be that should not be when we pass through the blood line and the blood of Jesus is applied in our heart applied by faith on a situation then that blood will turn us around and it will, will not be the same again when it says this is solution ground and you will not leave like you came what it means is you came in unrighteous you go back righteous amen you came in a hardened sinner you come out as a holy saint a change happens when we come to the lord and we meet the lord and then we're able to say the things i used to do i do them no more the things i used to drink i drink them no more and the weeds i used to smoke I smoke them no more. And the dress that will expose you and make other people to lust after you. The dress I used to wear, I wear that no more. The lies I used to tell, the evil I used to do, I do them no more that is the evidence of the experience of salvation in our lives righteousness of faithful saints through girded unadulterated mercies it tells us in romans chapter 12 reading from verse 1 i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice sin dead is that sacrifice she that liveth in pleasure the pleasure of the flesh is dead while she liveth but it is the salvation of the lord the conversion of the lord coming upon our lives that gives us that mercy and then he says you present your body a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service and then in verse 2 it tells source and be not conformed to this world this world is ruled governed by satan satan is the god of this world all those practices all those ideas all those evil things all those wicked things they are they are orchestrated by satan the god of this world and now you have come away from under the authority of satan and you come under the authority of king jesus because of that you are no more under the authority of the god of this world be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of god matthew chapter 5 in matthew chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 6 they say blessed are day which hunger and thirst after righteousness you look at your life you say this is not clean enough you look at your life this is not righteous enough you look at your life this is not honest enough you look at your life this is not pure enough you look at your life this is not heavenly enough and then everything i've tried to do by my own righteousness self-righteousness it doesn't make it and it 
is not acceptable unto God. And you want that righteousness that will make you acceptable in the courts of heaven. And you hunger and you thirst. You say, oh Lord, I thought I was saved, but I look at my life and there's no difference between what I'm doing and what I used to do. I want the righteousness that heaven will recognize. I want the righteousness that the blood of Jesus alone will accomplish in my life. I hunger, I thirst, and blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. He'll fill you with righteousness today. He'll fill your life with a transparent kind of righteousness. Heaven made righteousness and gracious righteousness, the grace and the righteousness that comes from Christ himself and then his mark is there even your people the people around you that knew you before they will recognize this man is not pretending this lady is not pretending the righteousness coming from the very throne of grace has come upon his life and that righteousness will work wonders in every life in Jesus name look at verse 7 in verse 7 blessed that are the merciful because you have received of the mercy of God and you say the mercy of God that forgive me is the mercy of God that set me free is the mercy of God that turned my life around is the mercy of God that gave me a converted life he changed life he transformed life because you got mercy or merited you also now give that mercy unto all the people you are no more harsh hard tough difficult that in the past people could not walk along with you and everybody feared you and everybody bit anywhere you were people knew be careful be careful that woman is there she knows how to nag she knows her tongue it's like there's acid on her tongue. And when she speaks to you, the acid will burn you, burn you up. But now she's saved. She's got the mercy of God. She's got the compassion of the Lord. And because of that, Lord, I'm grateful. How could I ever be forgiven? How could I ever have a changed life? And because of the mercy that she has got, she is able to show mercy to other people now. She is merciful. Charity begins at home. Mercy begins at home to her husband. The husband now to, her, to his wife and the parents to the children. And the child that says, now, mommy, daddy, I am saved. The cruel thing, the difficult thing, the dangerous thing she used to do will do no more. Because mercy has come unto him. Mercy has come unto her. And she stretches forth the hand of mercy. And she speaks. He speaks with the tongue of mercy. And blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Look at verse 8. In verse 8, blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. Before we came to Christ, we were polluted in our heart. Pollution in the heart. And all those uh, evil things, dirty things, dirty thoughts, dirty life, that he planned, that he imagination, all those things were there, but now we come to Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ that forgives us, sets us free, and purifies the heart. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I will see God. Not with a defiled heart, not with an impure heart. Not with a polluted heart. You're going to see God. You see God because he has cleansed you. He has forgiven you. He has taken all those evil things away. And now the mercy of God has brought salvation, full salvation. The mercy of God has brought cleansing, real cleansing. The mercy of God has turned your life around for the better. If it's not happened yet, it will happen tonight. To you, I said to you, 
unto you that mercy of God will operate in every life tonight in Jesus name Amen. Hebrews chapter 4 and I'm reading from verse 14 Hebrews chapter 4 we're looking at verse 14 it says seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens Jesus the Son of God let us hold fast a profession what's our profession that Jesus is my Savior hold that fast that Jesus is my healer hold that fast that Jesus is my deliverer hold that fast that Jesus will show mercy unto me hold that fast that Jesus your proclamation your profession that Jesus will not reject me hold that fast that Jesus is able and Jesus will cleanse me our profession that Jesus will manifest his mercy his love his compassion and turn my life around towards heaven hold on and hold fast that profession seeing then that we have a great 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 high priest that is passed into the heavens Jesus the Son of God let us hold fast a profession look at verse 15 in verse 15 for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched or the feeling of our infirmities is touched that you are languishing in sin is touched that you are sorrowful in your sin is touched that the, the stream of your sin like a sea like a river is uh, driving you and sweeping you on fast to a lost eternity because of that he has pity is touched with the feeling of our infirmities and he was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin look at verse 16 in verse 16 let us therefore come let us therefore come to the Savior. Let us therefore come to the healer. Let us therefore come to the deliverer. Let us therefore come to the helper. Let us therefore come to the compassionate maker. Let us therefore come. This is your time. I said this is your time. As you come, it will save you. As you come, it will heal you. As you come, it will deliver you. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy you see that that mercy is still available from everlasting to everlasting from generation to generation from one place to the other from one man to his neighbor from one woman to a neighbor the mercy of God is still there that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need this is the time when the Lord himself will show his mercy and grant you his mercy for forgiveness say amen, amen. his mercy for freedom say amen. amen his mercy for healing say amen. amen his mercy for deliverance say amen, amen. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. Mercy is here today to forgive. Mercy is here today to change your life and to transform your life. Mercy is here today to turn everything around for the better. And as you, you look at your life and you say, I don't merit anything. I know how sinful my life is. I know how evil my life is, but I want the mercy of God. Wherever you are, here in Yola, 
here in every stage, you know you need the mercy of God that will forgive you, that will set you free, that will give you salvation, full salvation, that will give you transformational salvation, a kind of salvation that transforms your life. You need mercy here tonight. You need mercy over there tonight. Wherever you are, raise up your hand. God bless you there. God bless you there. God bless you. God bless you there. Raise up that hand very well. And you're telling the Lord, you're pointing to heaven. The mercy comes from you. The salvation comes from you. The forgiveness comes from you. The freedom comes from you. And the conversion comes from you. The transformation comes from you. That's why you're raising up your hand now. Oh Lord, I need mercy. I need mercy that will forgive. I need mercy that will set me free. I need mercy that will change my life. I need mercy that will transform my life. Raise up that hand wherever you are. Online, raise up that hand. Indicate there, I want the mercy for salvation. I want the mercy for forgiveness. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. If you're raising up your hand, you stand up. You're standing up for Jesus. You're standing up for his uh, salvation. You're standing up for his forgiveness. Stand up, stand up for Jesus and say, Lord, I need your mercy. I need your forgiveness. You're raising up your hand. Did you hear what I said? Raise up your hand and stand up and say, Lord, I need your mercy. I need your grace. I need your help. So that after that salvation, it will also help you to labor in newness of life. That whatever you were before, you'll not be like that again. You're standing up now. As you stand up, confess to the Lord and say, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. I cannot save myself. The good works I try to do, they're so dirty. They have ulterior motive. All that cannot save me. But Lord, I come. Save me. Forgive me. And grant me the joy of your salvation. The happiness that comes with your salvation. Grant unto me now. I'm going to pray with you and for you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, the Father of all compassion, of all mercies, of all love, you love all your people. That's why you sent Jesus Christ to bear and to carry our sins away. Lord, I pray for everyone standing, raising up their hands, desiring that they will have your forgiveness and the freedom and the salvation. Save them in Jesus' name. Amen. Forgive all their sins. Take and blot away all the condemnation, all the guilt in their lives in Jesus' name. Amen. And let your spirit bear witness with their hearts that their sins are forgiven. That their lives are turned around. And give them help and grace not to continue in their sins anymore. In Jesus' name, turn every life around for the better. Heavenward, righteous, holy pure even from now in jesus name let your spirit bear witness with every heart every soul that they are now children of god and they have the grace of god now to live in newness of life confirm it lord for everyone in jesus name i pray it is done i said it is done Keep on standing. Our counselors are there and they'll help you and uh, grant you the privilege of telling who you are and what the Lord has done. And they'll make you feel a particular sleep that will help us to keep on helping you. We'll call on um, uh, Modricin Overseer to take over now. Congratulations for the mercy that has been extended to you. Fill the forms clearly, write in capital letters. And when you finish writing, submit to the counselor attending to you. This is to enable us, help you, how you can continue in this new life.
Counselors, let's do it very fast. Let's spread to the back, to my right, to my left, and the middle hall. Take the data, write everything clearly, describe when necessary. Where there are no house addresses, you can describe very clearly so that we'll be able to trace them. Those online, you can also fill the form by clicking the link below your system there so you can give us information about yourself to enable us help you. Counselors, let's spread. And when you finish where you are attending to, get to the other place so that we can quickly finish. Remember, our Father is coming up again to pray for your miracle, the miracle of mercy that God is about to give you in this final night. So keep praying and preparing yourself right now because today there will be an explosion of miracles. So be praying and preparing yourself and be telling the Lord, I will not leave you this final night. I will receive my miracle of mercy. God has released his mercy of salvation, mercy of restoration. He has all kinds of mercy for you here tonight. Fill the forms very quickly. Those who cannot write, please let's help them to write. And those who do not have writing materials, by road to write, please help them to write. And as soon as you collect those forms, ensure you submit them to your supervisor. Tonight is night of wonders. Tonight is night of wonders. So pray and call upon God as you prepare yourself. We are not in a hurry tonight. By the grace of God, you receive your own before you go. Counselors, when you finish taking the, the data, please stand by those who have challenges and help them to come out and give their testimonies when it is time. Practically, God will demonstrate his power here tonight. Not by your power, not by might, but by mercy. Tonight, pray and tell the Lord, I am ready to experience your all round mercy in my life. Remember, the believer's banquet for all those who gave their lives to Christ before today and those who, are, who have just given their lives to Christ now on the 4th of December. Believer's banquet at our headquarter church in Yola at Pupule Street, GRA, and all over the regions and in all other states and centers globally. Tonight is your night. Tonight is your night. Whatever challenge, whatever sickness, whatever ailment, the Lord is here to manifest his mercy in everyone tonight, and you are part of it. It's your turn. Say, it's my turn. It's my turn. Get ready. Prepare yourself. Counselors, if you are done, you signify by waving at me. If you are done, signify by waving your hands. Those counseling behind the choir stand, if you are done, can you wave your hand? Let me see. If you are done, wave your hands. Wave your hands. Thank you very much. I can see you waving your hands there. 
Okay, the hall facing me, I can also see you waving your hands. Those by my left hand side, if you are done, can you also wave your hand? Those by my left hand side. Okay, please let's round up very quickly there. Please be preparing. Tonight, we are not coming here tomorrow again. This is the final night. And God will not allow you to live here with your challenge. He will not allow you to go home with any challenge you have come with. Tonight, tell the Lord, I will never let you go. This mess is here, not because of what you are, not because of what you have, but he is going to give you the miracle mercifully tonight. And you will enjoy your own, and you will carry and go home with it in Jesus' name. So be praying, be praying, be praying. The man of God will soon come up, be praying and telling the Lord, this is my night. This is my night. I will experience it. I will testify. It's your turn. You have been wondering, many people have been giving testimony. Tonight is your turn. Even those who gave before, if God gives you another one tonight, because you may have double, triple, God will multiply your miracles, and you will testify more tonight in Jesus' name. So please prepare yourself. Those by my left-hand side, if you are done, can you wave at me? Can you wave at me, the counselors? If you are done there, please wave your hands. Wave your hands. Thank you very much. Shall we rise up on our feet now? Let's rise up on our feet. Rise up on your feet and get ready as the servant of God comes to release the mercy of God. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. You know that your miracle is coming tonight by the mercy of God. I said, praise the Lord. By his mercy, he forgives. By his mercy, he sets free. By his mercy, he heals. By his mercy, he delivers. And it's not because of marriage. It's not because of what you pay, but because of what he has done. That's why he heals Christ the healer. Christ the redeemer and Christ the deliverer is there tonight. I said it's there tonight. Your surrounding has taken your voice away. I said he's here tonight. He will heal you. He will deliver you. Every kind of sickness, every kind of infirmity, he'll take away right there tonight in Jesus' name. This is the final night. Finite, final for that sickness. Final for that infirmity. Final for that yoke. Final for that affliction. And the glory of God will come upon your life. Yes. The healing, the deliverance, the redemption, yes. the miracle, yes. final tonight. All things that were painful in your life, the sicknesses in your life, you'll drop them here tonight. Yes. Final, final, final for the suffering. You lay your hand when you have the problem here and online. You lay that hand there expecting that when you hear the final amen, everything would have gone. And then you raise up the other hand knowing you welcome healing tonight. You welcome deliverance tonight. You welcome miracle tonight. Amen. The Lord is ready now. He has come with your miracle. Ready to receive. Get ready to receive. Father, in Jesus' name. Yeah. We well, bless your name tonight because we are a God of love. A God of compassion. 
a God that has pity, a God of mercy. And Lord, tonight we pray you show your pity, your love, your compassion, your mercy on everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Every form of sickness, every form of infirmity, every form of disease, take everything away tonight in Jesus' name. Problem in the brain, problem in the mind, problem of insanity, problem of confusion, touch them right now. Take everything away right now. Perform the supernatural deliverance right now in Jesus name all those who have a sight problem their eyes are dim or their eyes are blind by your merciful uh, uh, compassion I pray Lord touch those blind eyes now open the blind eyes in Jesus name those who are deaf and dumb you are the God of power Lord, I pray you manifest your power on them now and open their tongue, open their ears. They will hear, they will speak well in Jesus' name. Any swelling on their body, hunchback, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Swelling of that boil and in the armpit, I command now, be healed in Jesus' name. Tumor in the brain and swelling of fibroid inside there, come out in Jesus' name. Elephantiasis, big legs, I pray that balloon will be deflated right now. Touch them and heal them.